Okay, we're going to get into the meat of this chapter now. We're going to talk about congruent figures, specifically congruent triangles, but let's get this idea of a congruent figure out of the way. We already know what it means to be congruent for angles and for segments, just that they have the same measure. But what about something you can't really measure? Like, take a look at these bear paws right here. You can't really measure those. You can measure certain parts of them, but overall, what do we say about the measure of it? Well, we can still say they're congruent. The definition of congruent, you guys have already told me this, is just that they have the same size and, and shape. So same size, same shape, means congruent. Now, I'd have to be able to pick up this one bear paw and put it right over the top of the other. We call that superimposing it. Superimpose one part over the other and see if they are the same size and the, sh and the same shape. Now, I can do that here with this frog. This frog and this frog are congruent. They have the same size and shape. Even though one of them has been turned, as long as I can, I might have to flip it, but if I turn it here, and then I can bring it right over the top, and you can't even tell the difference between the two, then I can say they're congruent. So one has to be able to be superimposed on the other. And again, you might need to turn or flip those to make it happen. Well, what about these two right here? This bear picture um, has been distorted in some way. So these two are not congruent. These have, There's some distortion there as we stretched it. Those are distorted. How about these bears? This bear is not the same size. It's definitely the same shape. There wasn't any distortion, but one's been reduced down in size. And so this is what we call similar, and that's something for a different unit. Similar figures have the same shape, but they aren't the same size. One's a reduction of the other. Back over here, though, these are congruent. Those bear paws are congruent. These frogs are congruent. And that's what we're going to look at with some geometric figures here. So let's go on to our next part. Alright, so these two pentagons, these two pentagons are congruent, and one of the things we need to be able to do is to match up what we call the corresponding parts. You'll remember from Unit 3, corresponding means they're in the same position. So what would be matched up here? Well, I would say that A here would match over with V here, B would go pair up with W, C with X, and so on around. And so as I name these figures, if I want to say they're congruent, and I do, they are congruent, then I list them, right, like it says right here. The vertices can be named in any order, but the corresponding vertices have to be named in the same order for each figure. So this is how this works. Let's just name this all the way around in a consecutive order. So I'm going to go A, B, C, D, E, working my way around. And that's the rule number one there. They have to go around in order. Okay, so that pentagon is congruent to this pentagon. Now, I've already decided how I have to name this. Since I named A first, I have to do the same thing with my next pentagon. So what matches A? We said it was V. So V has to come first. And I have to match up the same order for each one. What goes with B, which I wrote second? That'd be W. So W comes second. And then working my way around, basically, I'm going to have X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we have these parts all matching up in the way we name it. Now, that means that every angle in this pentagon is congruent to the angles in this pentagon. Same with sides. And you can see there's 10 different relationships that we're going to write. So let's start it off. We've got angle A is congruent to angle V. Angle A congruent to angle V. We've got angle B congruent to angle W. We've got angle C congruent to angle X. Now pause the video and fill in these last two angle pairs that are congruent. Okay, how'd you do? You should have had D congruent to Y and angle E congruent to Z. Moving on, the same thing happens with the sides. Which sides are congruent? If I go from A to B, for example, what does it match over on this one? A to B is going to be matching with V to W. So we're going to write that in segment form. So segment AB. It's congruent to segment VW. What else matches up here? Uh, segment BC, that's congruent to segment WX. Uh, keep going here, CD. What does CD match? CD matches XY. And finish that off. Fill out those last two. Which segments can we say are congruent that we haven't already said? Pause the video and then come back and check.
Okay, here, here's how I wrote them. ED matches ZY and segment AE matches segment VZ. Remember, the order that you write segment names in doesn't really matter. So if you have these just switched around, you're still okay. But come up and mark in the picture. We never finished those angles either. So let's get everything marked here that matches up. There's a lot to say. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then also those angles. Yikes, this is going to be a challenge. Okay, B match W. C, I'm going to double mark C. And D. Triple if I can squeeze it in there. With Y. And then last one, let me just put two slashes on that one. Okay, that is a lot of work. Luckily for us, we're going to be finding some shortcuts to some of this. But basically, when I say these pe these uh, pentagons are congruent, I am saying that every single angle has a matching angle, and every single side has a matching side. So that's our definition of congruent. We write a statement like this, and all of this information can be pulled out of that statement. Now let's try it with triangles, since that's what we're specifically going to be looking at. So on triangles, here's our definition. Triangles are congruent if and only if there's that key phrase from biconditionals. Triangles are congruent if and only if their vertices can be matched up so that the corresponding parts, both angles and sides, are congruent. So here's our example. They tell us in this statement that these triangles are congruent. So I'm going to write down everything I know from that statement, and we're going to mark it in our picture. This statement tells me that angle E, which I find right here, is congruent to an angle in this triangle. And how do I know which one? It's from the statement. Look at this. E in the first spot matches up where angle Z is in the second spot, in the second statement. So angle E is a match to angle Z. Those are going to be our congruent angles. Next, I'm going to talk about angle F. And angle F has a, has a congruent angle also. Well, how do I know where it is? Well, angle F is going to match wherever angle X is because they are both in the middle. So angle X matches angle F, and that leaves only one choice. My last one is going to be for angles, angle G, and angle G is a match to angle Y because they are listed last. Okay, do I have some sides that are the same? Of course I do. So let's take a look at the sides. Let's take the first two letters, EF, and let's say that EF is a side that's congruent to the first two letters of my second triangle, which is ZX. So E to F, tick mark that, is a match to Z to X, tick mark that. Same goes for the next ones. Let's go from F to G and look at for that segment, F to G. Which two letters are in the same spots? That would be X and Y. So FG is congruent to XY right here. We'll double tick mark those. And then our last side, which is E to G, those are the first and the last letters, matches Z to Y. So our last side, EG, is congruent to ZY. One, two, three. One, two, three. So just this statement again right here told me all these angles were the same and all those sides are the same. Now, this is a biconditional, so we can go backwards. What if we had this picture? This picture that marks all of these angles and sides the same, can we decide if these are congruent triangles? By our definition, we definitely can. So let's name these triangles that are congruent. I'm going to have one triangle, which I'm going to just name, let's just name it 1, 2, 3. See the 1 mark, 2 marks, 3 marks? Let's just name it that way. So it's RQS, RQS, and that is congruent to, and this is where we need to be careful, which angle matches R. We need to list it first the way we've listed it here. So first we listed R, what's our match? That's B. So I'm going to put triangle B, and what comes next? It's the match to Q. C is the match to Q, so B, C. And then finally the match to S in the last spot, that's D. So triangle B, C, D would be the way to write that. Could I write it a different way? Absolutely. I just If I want to mix this up, maybe I want to go, uh, let's just say Q first, and then S, and then R. Then how does that change the way I write my second statement? Well, I still need Q to match with C. So if Q's first, then C gets to come first. So that's going to be C. S matches with D. Put that next. And last, R matched with B. So you can mix it up. It's the correspondence that you set up that's important.
All right, let's do this last example. We are given these three, or these, we are given these two triangles that are congruent. You don't even have a picture of this. I want to see if we can list the corresponding parts without even looking at a picture. Let's start with angles. Those are the easiest. So let's list the three angles of the first triangle. We've got angle G, then we've got angle P, and then we've got angle I. And those are going to be congruent to three angles in the second triangle. How do I know which one is congruent to G? Well, I got to just look at where G is and put it, match it up with the first letter there. So angle G was first, angle T is its match. What goes with P? That's the second letter in the statement. That's going to be angle O. And of course, angle I is going to match angle U. Okay, those are the congruent angles. Now, what other parts do triangles have? They've got angles and they've got sides. So we have to do the same thing for the sides. Which sides would be congruent? Naming a side with two letters, the side that would be named GP. If I go from G to P, that's one side. Another side is PI from this first triangle. And what's the third side? That's going to be GI. We'll skip over that P. GI. Okay, those are the three sides of my first triangle. How do they match up? Just put down what corresponds to those. So first, let's go with TO. Those were the first two. And then PI, the last two named, are going to match the last two here. That's going to be OU. And last, G to I matches T to O. Just pull that right out of the statement. So we don't even really even need a picture. Oh, I said that wrong. That's TU. My bad. U is last. So TU. We don't really even need a picture. This statement tells us everything we need. Can we say this in two other ways? They told us GPI is congruent to TOU. Can we mix that up? Well, last example, I showed you how to do that. So let's just change the order of these letters. Just mix them around, shuffle them up. Maybe put I in front. Let's go I, G, P. How would that be congruent? Your job is just to say what the order would be for the other set. So I matched U. So we're going to put U in front, just like we put I in front. G matched T. So T is going to come second. And our last one, P, that was matched up with O. So there's one other way. What's another way we could do this? How about we put the P in the front? So P, and then let's go I and G. Oh, pig. OK, we'll, we'll do the triangle pig. And that's congruent to what letters? Give that, give that a shot. In fact, pause the video, write it down, then come back and see what it is, see if it matches. OK, if you did it, this is what I got. I got triangle P is congruent to triangle out. And that's about what I'm going to go do, because that ice cream in my freezer is calling me. I'm going to go pig out on it. Peace out.